Fill you up to the bar, Barflies, and have a drink with me. My name is Kellen, and this is the Midwestern Barfly Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another round of this crazy thing we call the podcast. My name is Kellen, your host. Thank you again for joining. This is episode number 11. And to be honest, I think we've broken a trend here, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever I record this damn show, every single time it's hot as nutsack outside. And you can go back from to the previous episodes and, uh, and see for yourself. Every time I bring up, oh, it's hot, oh, it's hot. Today, it's not too bad. A little stifly, a little stifly, not the greatest. But you know what? Tomorrow, that's where the world is going to burn. Apparently, tomorrow's going to be 95 degrees, so I am rather happy that we're not recording then because the studio I'm in wouldn't be the greatest for that kind of weather. Anyway, also, please tell me if any part of this show sounds different audio-wise. I'm in what I would kind of call a new studio of sorts. I've uh, been kicked out of the old studio for the time being, little renovations and whatnot. I might be lying, I might not, anyway. Uh, but yep, we're recording from a new part of the Barfly Manor. That sounds kind of that sounds kind of fancy, Barfly Manor instead of Barfly House. I might start going with that. That might be a cool t-shirt for the future. Anyway, that was a side note, I'm sorry. Uh, but yep. We got a full plate of ideas and topics to talk about, but before we get there, as you all know, this show is sponsored by the Midwestern Barfly Gazette Shop. Yes, that is our merch store. That is where we sell all of our goofy, fun, relatable, drinking, gambling, whatever kind of merch you enjoy type stuff. I just lost my train of thought there, but I'm going to keep going with this ad read as I planned it. Uh, we have all of your greatest selections, all your greatest lines, like the I, My Grandma's Bookie line, which that line will come into play later in this episode. We have the Win Bets Pound Beers line. We have the What Did I Do line. We have all these, all this great merch that you can choose from for your friends, your loved ones, your dog, your mother, your father, your neighbor, whoever. You can load up your cart and give them away for all I care. Just buy, buy, buy. So make sure to check out the store. It'll be linked in the description of wherever you're listening to this podcast. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this show as much as I enjoy making it for you. So without further ado, let's get into today's topics. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the first topic of this episode, I wanted to tell... uh, I want to tell you all like a personal story of mine, like a story time kind of thing. I want to tell you this because this was the most preposterous, insane situation that I've ever been in. It happened just recently on a shopping trip to, and when I describe the setting in a few moments, you'll, you'll know what store this is. I just don't think I could say it, but you might get an idea. Uh, but this story has to do with a Karen... Oh, we all love our Karens. Those vi- those videos actually are pretty damn funny, but I digress. A uh, Karen and the I'm My Grandma's Bookie line that we sell. Yeah, I'm My Grandma's Bookie line. Weird combination, but I will continue. So uh, so this, this trip to the store was like any other. Like a normal person, I walked in, had my, uh, had my cart, had my list, ready to go. Now, for the record, I'm not the biggest fan of people. So my plan is always just to keep my head down, get my shit, get to the register, and leave. That kind of stuff. And I always have a set pattern, like, with the list. Because the list never really changes when I go to this particular store. So I go in, hit the booze section first, then hit the veggies, then hit the dairy, hit the bread, uh, hit the toiletries. And then I get to that extra section, if that makes sense. Like, that extra section is where they have all, like, the chips, the snacks, um, some of the shampoo kind of stuff is within there. Oddly enough, but that's where this story takes place. So, uh, so I'm in there and I'm looking for this specific chip. Not, not to get too detailed, like and get boring. It was a Himalayan sea salt chip of some kind. Granted, a little extra, little fruity tooty, hooty booty, all that kind of stuff. But those things taste delicious, so fuck off. Uh, anyway, I'm in that aisle looking for the chips, 
And uh, I sense this, pr- I'm standing there and I sense this presence. Like this, this, this just weird presence to me. And I turn around and I notice this, this, this woman. Now I'm not trying to fat shame or anything, but she was rather large. Just trying to set the story. Like get your minds out of the gutter. Don't call me an asshole. I'm setting the, the scene here. So relax. A little large. And uh, she had her, had her kid with her. Rounding the corner coming into that aisle. So, like a normal person, I went, eh, not going to mind it. Go back to what I'm trying to do. Focus on my chips. So a few, probably 15, 30 seconds go by. And I hear, just out of nowhere, the, and these are quotes, by the way. Wow, what a terrible shirt. Wow, what a terrible shirt. Now, when I heard this, I thought to myself, there is no way in fucking hell that someone is talking to me right now. No way. But I turned around to see where that came from. And sure enough, this particular woman is right behind me staring daggers into my soul. Just like the most karen look on her face. Just wow, what a terrible shirt. Now, not understanding what she's getting at, I look at her, I go, um, excuse me? Just to like try to better understand what's wrong. She said, and I quote, your shirt, that is the most despicable piece of clothing I've ever seen. Now, to remind you all, I'm wearing like the cool, I think the color was called cool blue, the I My Grandma's Bookie shirt, which I think is an amazing shirt. I've had a lot of compliments on that shirt, but I guess she didn't like it. So she said, that's the most despicable piece of clothing I've ever seen. And befuddled, I, I look at her. And I, then I say to her, quote, I don't think I understand what you're getting at. Just to further the situation, try to like dig deeper into why she doesn't like this. Apparently, she didn't fucking like that answer. She got all huffy, puffy, and infuriated by my response, which I thought was a pretty good response. Like a normal response, trying to keep the conversation going. <laughs> she hits me with one of the dumbest lines I've ever heard in my entire life. Gambling, quote, gambling is a sin and you are a terrible person for getting your grandma into it. Now, if you've been following this this show, this website for a while, you'll know that my grandma did help make picks and whatnot with the website. She was a big part of it and she did pass away. Now, that didn't play into this. This woman doesn't know me, doesn't know my grandmother, so I was not mad at that. I was mad that she took umbrage over something as simple as gambling in a funny t-shirt. That's where I was a little upset with. Not grand, not upset. I was more like laughing because when she said that, I kind of like laughed at her face like the fuck is wrong with you, lady? So she said that. Again, didn't take too lightly to the laughing. And all I did was I wanted to be the bigger person. I wanted to hit her with the big, the best line I could possibly give her so I could walk away and be done with this. So I look her dead in the eye as I'm walking and I say, lady, grandma's gamble too. And I just kept walking. Now, when I said this, you could, as I'm walking away, you could hear her gums flapping and the squawk like voice that she had just emanating through the aisle. And I didn't have anything. I didn't like have any problem with that. I didn't want to turn around. I wasn't going to keep it going because I know that she's just a terrible person who just has a terrible life and wants to ruin fun for anyone, for everyone. But I did hear a specific noise along with her gum slapping squawk like voice. A sound of me winning this particular argument. How do I know I won? It's because her kid was pushing her the other way, like edge, like, pushing her the other way in the aisle and saying, mom, let's go. You're embarrassing. This is over. This is ridiculous. That my friends is when you know you've won any kind of argument, any, because for one kids, they they don't like talking to other people out in public like that. They don't like when their parents do it. It's boring. I've been there. So normally when kids do that, they're just standing there waiting for the conversation to be done or they kind of like yank on their parents like pant leg or shirt saying hey let's go 
But when the child audibly says, you're embarrassing, let's go, you know you've won. You know you're in the right spot, she's in the wrong, and she just looks like the bigger ass, a bigger asshole than she, when she started. And I just laughed my ass all the way to the register and out of that store. It was fantastic. And in honor of that, I made the Grandma's Gamble 2 line. So if you check out our store, it says it right across the front. as a big middle finger to this woman. Grandma's Gamble 2. Buy that. Buy that for your grandma. And if you ever meet this woman or somebody like that, make sure to wear it right in front of them. And say, hey, lady, Grandma's Gamble 2. Because fuck that lady. Let's go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the next portion of this show, I wanted to shift shift a few gears, shift it over to football, to sports for a little bit. I wanted to talk about this new contraption, this new weird-looking thing that the NFL has added into uh, into the training camps so far. So for those of you that don't know or haven't seen the videos and have been to training camp yet, certain players out on the field are being required to wear these things called guardian caps. Now, what is a guardian cap, you may ask? Well, it's the NFL's, the competition committee, I think is what it's called, and like medical professionals' new way to try to make the game safer. It's been implemented in peewee in peewee leagues and high schools like that kind of stuff and now it's getting pushed up to the pros so what are the specifics is probably the best way to explain it um so these guardian caps they have been required to be worn by linemen linebackers and tight ends why is that it's because these certain positions are getting the most head-to-head not trauma but hits impact blows what have you to the dome so they're trying it out on them what do these guardian caps do you may ask well they're big ass paddings on the top of their heads and according to medical professionals if one player is wearing this and one is not that these caps will reduce impact to the dome by about 10 percent now if two players are wearing it and they go at each other It reduces it by 20%. The question is, where do I stand with all of this? And the answer to that question is, I'm on the fucking fence about it. I am. It's it's tough to really have a take on this. It really it really is, for me personally. Because I on one side, and I'm gonna bundle a few things together because I think they all go together. Uh, I want I want people to be safe. I don't want people to get concussions, die, get injured, any, anything like that. Like I, I believe the health and the safety of players is very important. And besides that obvious point, I love football. I love football. I'm one of those people that I am perfectly content with sitting my ass on the couch from noon to eleven or ten or whenever the last the night game ends, and just watching football all day. I'm completely content with that. And the sad part is with all the new, well, sad, very loose term there, uh, with all the new findings of head trauma and like medical situations, I get scared on a daily, on a yearly basis, because whenever football season comes, that football is at the end of its rope, that it may cease to exist in the future. And I don't want that. And I love football. That is why the more that we can keep players safe and moving and healthy and whatnot, the better chance this game has to survive. Granted, some people might say I'm crazy, that football will never die or whatnot. I, but you know what? I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. And I think that we need to continue to progress more with these medical innovations to help save the game that we love. But on the flip side of it, the football purist in me is like, motherfucker, what about the the smacking of the pads, the clinking of the helmets, just the, the brutality of the sport? Don't take that away from us. What is wrong with you? And I get that too. <laughs> I get that. It just And I can see like the players that don't like it because it's super heavy, it's awkward, it's like bubble wrapping the game, all that stuff. And granted, if you look up 
Jason Kelsey in the video of him with the bubble wrap on his helmet. Freaking hilarious, but that's just a side note. Like, I get both sides. So, as a fan, it's tough for me to really pick a side. So, basically, the only take I really have is, let's let this play out, and let's see what comes of these Guardian caps. Because I think I think they're the rule right now is they stay on until week t- until the second week of the preseason or something like that, which is, isn't bad. I mean, just a little awkward for the remainder of training camp and into the preseason. But to me, I think we just let it play out, see what kind of data or what kind of scientific bullshit that the that the medical teams can pull from it, and maybe they can build a helmet that res- not resembles the Guardian cap because it's going to be like 27 times bigger than the one they already have, but something that's as condensed, that's a condensed version of the Guardian cap so that players can stay healthy, so they're not taking as men- much impact to the head, but we also have the purest form of football that we can get. That's just, that's just me. Like, let it, let it play out. Let's see what comes of it. But if it starts moving into the regular season, that's where we should have a discussion. Because personally, that just takes away from the entire game. What well, what do I know? I'm just a guy with a beer and a laptop from the Midwest trying to make sense of all of this. All righty. So for the third segment of this show, I got a weird, I got a weird comment. Not a qu- comment, a question for you all. This one, uh, it's going to be like kind of a hypothetical. And this is the kind of thing that we're like, whenever you see posts on the website and on the social media is like, oh, leave a voicemail or an email with a question for, for me to answer on this show. This is kind of an example of what we're looking for. So hypothetically, and it, oh man, the audio is going to be fucked up when I try doing that. I'm not going to hold this mic. I'm going to put it right here. Hypothetically, uh, what would be weirder? What would be weirder? Uh, a parent and a child having a conversation while one or the other is using the bathroom, using the toilet. Uh, two siblings having a conversation while one or the other is using the toilet. Or two roommates having a conversation with each other while one of them is using the toilet. I don't know what, where I came up with this, but hear me out. This is what I'm trying to get at here. So to set the scene, the mother... And the, the, the parent and the child one, we're not talking like, we're not talking like the parent, is, like the child's taking a dump and the, the parent's like, oh, did you take a, like they're five years old or two years old. They're like, oh, did you take a poop? Did you take a poop? Did you go? Did you go? Are you okay? That kind of stuff. Like the potty training conversation. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about <laughs> like a parent take, like using the restroom and the child's like, hey, ma, what do you want from the store? Hey, ma, I can't find this. Hey, ma, I can't find that. Like that kind of a conversation. Or like vice versa. Like the kid's using the bathroom and the mom's like, hey, what do you want from the store? Or hey, I need you to do this when you're done. Or hey, this, hey, that. Like just a normal ass conversation. And then same thing with siblings where they're just having a weird, they can even be having an argument, which would be kind of funny. That kind of a thing. Or, and siblings as well. So like that kind of a scenario sort of thing. Which one would be weirder? I don't really know where I came up with this. I have a weird fucking brain, I know. But think about it. Which one would be weirder? I don't really know what else to to explain it. Because to me, if you look at at the latter two, look at the sibling one and look at the, uh, the roommate one situations. Chances are you have weird ass conversations with your sibling or your roommate on a regular basis. And when it comes to like siblings for not siblings, uh, roommates, for example, like when I was in college, if I was, if I were to be taking a dump door closed and my roommate's like, Hey, I'm going to the union. Do you want anything? I wouldn't think two things of it. Maybe because I'm a dude, maybe because I really don't give a shit, but like, I think that would be the most normal situation. And to be honest, this whole segment, I have no plan for this segment. I'm talking freely right now. So if this is just me babbling, I'm sorry. But anyway, going back to that, um, with the, with the roommate one, personally, I wouldn't really think anything of it. 
I just would think it's funny. I would be like, hey, give you an answer or whatnot. Uh, sibling one, to me, I would think the same thing as well. But at the same time, I never had a sibling. So it's like I always look at the roommate situation as like the sibling situation where like I had to live with somebody for a whole year or multiple years. So to me, and make sure to leave a leave uh, your thoughts in the comments on which one do you think is weirder or if any of them are weird. To me, the, the child talking to a parent one would be the weirdest. Like if I was, like if I was, I'm going to be vulgar. I really don't care. If I was pooping and I had the door closed and a parent came up to the door and went, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing in there? That would be a weird fucking question. But hey, what are you doing in there? Uh, are you coming to the, Coming to dinner, are you, uh, uh, are you going shopping? What do you want from the store? I'd be rather startled. I'd be sitting on my phone on Twitter, just like looking up. Why, why are you having? The, why are we having this conversation right now? Granted, it is my mother and my father, but to me, all three are odd. But the parent one's the oddest, if that makes sense. But granted, but at the same time, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Please leave them in the comments below. I know this is kind of a short segment, but I wanted to introduce that to get some folks talking because that's the point of this website. Discussion, discussion, discussion. Discuss this shit in the comments. And please, if you want to hear any other scenarios like this, if you want to give your own scenarios, if you want to give your own situational topics, please leave them in the comments or check out the phone number or the email in the description of wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can leave it on one of those two forms of contact. And please, please, dear God, don't hate me for this, for this topic. I just thought it was pretty funny and I wanted to put it out here. Jesus Christ. All right, everyone. I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode of the Midwestern Barfly Podcast. I am so thankful to have you listening to this, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, the website, wherever you're listening to this podcast. I appreciate you very much. Uh, Please make sure to come back next week, episode 12, right back, same spots. Uh, I'll talk about all the goofiest sports, pop culture, beer-related topics that we could think of. And please have a great rest of your week. Don't forget to check out the website for any future blogs that we have put up. Don't forget to check out the store. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, all that shit. And I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Please take care. Love y'all. Goodbye.